The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Sports Central. I'm Justin Allegri. San Jose State finishes their season 3-9 following a 38-7 loss at San Diego. We'll recap that game with San Jose State head coach Ron Carragher. We'll also look to the women's basketball team with San Jose State head coach Jamie Craighead. Plus, a preview of this week's matchup with Santa Clara and San Jose State by looking back at the matchup when the Broncos were number two in the nation and San Jose State knocked them off in 1969. But first, let's go back to the highlights at San Diego. San Jose State traveling to San Diego to take on the Aztecs in the final game of the 2014 season. Aztecs have the ball first, and Donnell Pumphrey, the third play of the game, busts it down the sideline for a 38-yard pickup, and it would set the tone for the afternoon on offense for the Aztecs. Spartans would force a punt, though, in their first drive, but the second possession for the Aztecs, Pumphrey bounces out to the left side, somehow stays alive for a 16-yard gain. And then Pumphrey again rips through the gap and slips his way into the end zone for the first score of the afternoon and making it 7-0 San Diego State. First drive was a three and out for the Spartans. The second drive, however, Mitch Raviza trying to scramble on a third down conversion. He does for 16 yards, but he is hit hard and goes airborne and lands awkwardly tweaking his back and he would not return in the game. Spartans then go to punt again and it's one of those beauties from Michael Carrizoza. 37 yard all the way down to the one yard line where it is down by the Spartans special teams. But the Aztecs were not phased. Pumphrey again gets good blocking downfield from his offensive line and sprints for 61 yards before being hauled in by Jimmy Pruitt in a foot race toward the end zone. We go to the start of the second quarter now and trying to bootleg and toss it out to Pumphrey, but look at the tackle from Maurice McKnight, saving a touchdown right at the goal line in the open field. A tremendous effort for him in a great game for Maurice McKnight. But Pumphrey would finish that drive and one that he started from, from one yard out. His second touchdown of the game, it was 14 to nothing, Aztecs. Spartans again, three and out, and the Aztecs went right back to it into the end zone. And this time it was Chase Price from one yard out, capping an 11 play drive to make it 21 to nothing. Spartans drive before the half, and Blake Jurich completes on the wide receiver screen to Tyler Winston for 12 yards and a first down. Then taking the Wildcat snap, it's Tyler Irvin running for 11 yards straight up the middle to the San Diego five yard line. With time expiring, they bring out Michael Carrizosa on for the field goal try from 21 yards away, but he misses wide right. And that's how the season has gone the past couple of weeks for San Jose State. Start of the second half, look at the hole that Pumphrey gets again. This time he's gone for 35 yards and it's the third touchdown of the game for him. And it was out of hand at this point, 28 to nothing San Diego State. Later in the third quarter, Jurich throws for Billy Freeman, but it is picked off by really two players, Trey Lomax, who tips it up in the initial contact, and then Malik Smith grabs it out of the air. Great concentration from both of those Aztecs players, and Jurich would not return after that play, suffering an injured knee. So San Jose State then gets back on it now with Joe Gray at the quarterback position. The Spartans go from the third string to the second string, now to the first string quarterback. With the score still at 28 to nothing, though, in the fourth quarter, Joe Alisi punts to Irvin, who calls for the fair catch, but does not catch the ball, and it hits off of Maurice McKnight's foot and then is recovered by San Diego State. Price then displays his power run ability with a 24-yard dash to the sideline, setting up first and goal for the Aztecs. They would settle for a field goal here for 23 yards from Donald Hageman, making it 31 to nothing. Adding more to the lead, it's lucky my name isn't Boo Radley, running for 11 yards in the fifth rushing touchdown for the Aztecs, making it 38 to nothing. Spartans would break the shutout, though, with Andrew Volert on a 34-yard touchdown strike from Joe Gray, but it was too little too late for San Jose State, and the final score was 38-7, to ending San Jose State's season. Donnell Pumphrey with 22 carries for 267 yards on the ground and three touchdowns. What a game for him. Meanwhile, Tyler Irvin was the bright spot for the Spartans. He had 83 yards on the ground, but they do lose, and they only had 244 yards of total offense, falling to 3-9 and nine on their season. 
Time now for this week's Lexus Drive of the Game, and for the final drive of the game of the year, we'll go back to San Diego in the fourth quarter where San Jose State punched in their only touchdown. This week's Drive of the Game starts in the fourth quarter, and the Spartans not on the scoreboard yet, trying to break the shutout. Forrest Hightower takes the kickoff and returns it 34 yards to the San Jose State 37. From there, Joe Gray hands off to Alvin Jelks for a five-yard run, and then on second down, they go right back to Jelks for six more yards and a first down to the San Jose State 42. Jelks and Gray continue to work now on a quick pass over the middle on a check down for three more yards. Then Gray throws a quick out to Daniel Bradbury for nine yards and another first down out of bounds for San Jose State. Once again on first down, Gray connects to Bradbury for six more yards before he is gobbled up at the 40-yard line of the Aztecs. And then the drive capper. Gray holds in the pocket and flips it downfield right to tight end Andrew Bowler for a 34-yard touchdown score. And the Spartans do break the shutout. Overall, the drive lasted seven plays, going 63 yards in a minute and 57 seconds. And that is this week's Lexus Drive of the Game. The men's basketball team played three games in the Wooden Legacy Tournament over the weekend. In the final game, they were down by Princeton 69 to 54. San Jose State began the contest one of eight from the floor and they fought back to make it a one point game 20 to 19. But Princeton hit their first 10 shots in the second half to roll to the victory. Jordan Baker added 23 points for San Jose State. The women's team also played in a tournament last weekend at the Cal Classic. In game two for them, they beat Cincinnati 79 to 54. They had their best shooting night of the year, knocking down 30 of 66 shots for 46 percent. We'll take our first break here on Spartan Sports Central and we return we'll look back at the 1969 basketball season and the major upset over Santa Clara who was number two at the time. More to come here on Spartan Sports Central. With millions of businesses all in one place the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. Can it get you to the moon? You'll need a space helmet. YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores. Check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. Field Sports Directors Cup honors the nation's best overall collegiate athletic program in each division, men's and women's sports. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us in USA Today, online, and on Twitter at LS Directors Cup. Over two decades of excellence, the Learfield Sports Directors Cup. I'm starving. Where's the food? Who's hungry? Una Mas. No way. Every party can use Una Mas. Fresh from the market ingredients is the essence of great tasting Mexican food. We grill our chicken and steak to perfection. And our fusion of traditional Mexican dishes means delicious, healthy choices for you. Una Mas. We taste better. We should invite her again. Welcome back on Spartan Sports Central. The year was 1969 and San Jose State knocked off then number two Santa Clara and they will play again this weekend 45 years later. Let's take a look back at that magical game. Well, Santa Clara University was 21-0, number two in the country behind UCLA with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar known as Lou Alcindor then right ahead of North Carolina and they were 21 and 0 and we were still in line to win that and to get an NIT bid. So that's why that game was so big. Plus, both schools were within three miles of each other. We played our home games at the Civic Auditorium and in this particular game, uh, it was sold out. 
Yeah, it was noisy, it was loud, everybody in there seemed to be involved. And it was a close game, so that uh, there was, you know, everybody was excited all the time. Uh, this game, two rivals right next to each other, both playing their home court at the Civic Auditorium, the WCAC. Well, we had, we had three guys who went to the ABA NBA. Dick Groves had a stint with the San Diego Conquistadors. Didn't last long, but he was there. Kobe Dietrich played 13 years in the ABA NBA. And one of them, uh, Darnell Hillman, is probably the best all-around player that I ever had a chance to coach. And we didn't have to tell him very much, just remind him, you know, to double down on and against uh, Autry, who was, you know, a great player for them. Uh, and they went out and they were ready to play. And so the game, you know, the game never got out of hand as far as we were concerned. It was back and forth. And when it came down to the nitty gritty right at the end, we were fortunate to win it. But we started off where they won the tip and went to Bud Ogden. Uh, Dick Rose batted away, Hillman batted and went to the top of the key. I grabbed it running full speed, stopped, threw the ball, uh, chest pass to Tim Holman, three-point play, so we're up 66-63. Ralph Ogden comes down, two shots in a row, 67-66. Uh, we make a stop, Bernie Vesey hits a shot, now it's 68-67. Dick Groves gets an inside shot, now it's 70 to 67 with a minute 20 left. So we make one stop, we're gonna win the game. Darnell Hillman took a 10-foot shot and then Bernie Vesey tipped it in and we won 73-69, but uh, it's really, uh, it was just an honor to play in that game and to be part of that because it's going to be 46 years this February 21st, 2015, and people are still talking about that game. It was a, it was a big victory, obviously, but I didn't realize, uh, honestly, that it was going to be mean that much. Well, Wes Matthews called it the greatest game and uh, greatest victory, greatest athletic victory in Santa State's history. We didn't even think about that. The issue was the game got over close to 11 o'clock at night. We had a game the next day at 12.30 on regional TV against USF. We had to get up at 6.30 and get to our pregame meal at 7.30 and take the bus up to USF and we won that game also. It was uh, a lot of fun and it's turned out to be one of the great games in San Jose State athletic history. See, I'm getting old now and I get, it's hard for me to remember those things. but. It was a very, very big thing because San Jose State's alums became a little more involved and, and uh, it, it, we celebrated that. I've seen a lot of Santa Clara and San Jose State you know, games since then, but uh, I know that it'll be intense on both sides and I know it means a lot to both of them, both teams. Uh, and especially to, to Dave, he's, I mean, this would be a signature win. We'll take another break here on Spartan Sports Central. When we come back, San Jose State women's basketball coach Jamie Craighead will be in studio. More to come when we return. <laughs> then all the parts come together, and there it is, our new car. So that's how Santa fits it in a sleigh. Wow. Wow. The magic of the season is here at the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Lease the 2015 GS350 for $449 a month for 36 months, and we'll make your first month's payment. See your Lexus dealer. Throw it. I'm starving. Where's the food? Who's hungry? Una Mas. No way. Every party can use Una Mas. Fresh from the market ingredients is the essence of great tasting Mexican food. We grill our chicken and steak to perfection. And our fusion of traditional Mexican dishes means delicious, healthy choices for you. Una Mas, we taste better. We should invite her again. With millions of businesses all in one place, the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. But can it get you to the moon? need a space helmet, YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores, check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. 
The Learfield Sports Directors Cup honors the nation's best overall collegiate athletic program in each division, men's and women's sports. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us in USA Today, online, and on Twitter at LS Directors Cup. Over two decades of excellence, the Learfield Sports Directors Cup. Welcome back on Spartan Sports Central. Now joined by San Jose State women's basketball coach Jamie Craighead. And coach, haven't seen you in a couple of weeks, but uh, coming off of a tournament where you had a tough loss against a very, very good Cal team and a win against Cincinnati. And you go in that maybe a tournament format. What did, what did you tell the, the players that they wanted to learn from a tournament format? You know, for us, we talked about the Mountain West Conference and the fact that we're going to have to play back-to-back -back in the first two rounds, and um, hopefully we get a bye somewhere in there. But at this point, you, you prepare for anything. Um, you know, I thought we played really tough against Cal. Uh, they were a very good basketball mm -hmm. team. Um, we hung with them for about 10 minutes of the first half, and then uh, we battled back. We actually finished the game on a 14-0 run. Jasmine Smith had a great game. And um, so, you know, I felt pretty good about it. Had to turn around and play Cincinnati, though, and it's a little bit – concerned about how we would respond and uh, we did great we shot a really high percentage and played well. well well a team like Cal because they have that national rank probably helps you in the long run and, and the team in the long run just to play that caliber of team yeah absolutely and playing them on their home court they were just at a tournament in Hawaii and obviously came back and shot the ball really well I think they shot 50% for the mm -hmm. game um, but yeah it, it was a tremendous opportunity for us and we get them returning to us next year which is a really yeah. cool thing for San Jose well and then you get the the comeback and it seems like every game that the Spartans have lost this year you guys come back nicely and yeah. win the next one. Yeah, on the road, yeah. which was our Achilles heel a year ago. So um, obviously maturity with our group. Um, they're learning how to win on the road early. And, and really, we had a lot of games on the road for a reason. And um, I think this is going to prepare us for the conference. Well, now the game against Cincinnati was the best shooting night for you guys this year. But it's easy to say that was the best <laughs> offensive night. Was it the best offensive night? Was it the best that you executed the offense this year? No, not really. Um, you know, we just shot a really high percentage. We only took 66 shots, and I thought, uh, you know, our legs might be a little bit shot because mm -hmm. we played the night before and had the quick turnaround. We even had shoot around on that day, but um, we played we played well. We played well enough to win the game, right. but I, we've actually played pretty well offensively. Um, Riverside, we we didn't do very well, but um, we're starting. We're getting better, and I think what's great is we're not peaking yet by any Good. means. And um, you know, I don't even think Trey is playing her best basketball yet and uh, Becca carried us for the first few games but we're, we're still trying to figure this all out so well if you shoot 46 percent and you still think that it's helps. not the best <laughs> offense that's pretty good I would think right it's a pretty good shooting percentage <laughs> yes um, I think we could have probably scored more points and moved right. the ball and, and got more shots up but um, I, I was really proud of the team they executed and they did what they had to do to get the win well now that you do have a good sample size of games do you kind of step back and say let's evaluate what's going on what have yeah. you evaluated what do you want to improve on you know, I think defensively, um, when we're really into the press and playing well, there's certain teams that we can get to turn the ball over mm -hmm. a lot. And then there's certain teams that want to run with us, and, and our kids just need to understand that that's about tempo for us. And uh, we want more shots. So right. uh, in order to get more shots, we have to have the other team get more shots up as well. Um, but I, I think that we're better defensively than we were a year ago at this point. Mm -hmm. Offensively, I actually think we, we still got a ways to go. Um, I'm an offensive coach, so maybe I'll yeah. always think that. But um, I think that individually, we're really starting to come together together as chemistry and, and gelling so that's good well last time you were on we talked about Terea and, and the depth of the team mm -hmm. allowing her to be away as the facilitator and just kind of go and score have yeah. you seen that with her and I know you mentioned you want to get a little more out of her still yeah I think it's different for her okay. you know she's she's used to having the ball in her hands every possession mm -hmm. and when you have balance it means there's gonna be times when somebody else takes the shot um, I think that she can be more aggressive and more aggressive in looking for her shots mm -hmm. and her attempts um, she's starting to get to the rim again uh, which is a part of her game. Um, but I think that she's really kind of deferred a little bit, and I want her to be more aggressive, and I want her to get more attempts up. So um, she shot it well against Cincinnati, got 16 attempts up, and, mm -hmm. and she got to the rim. So that was that was positive. But um, I need her to get more points and, and get in there. Well, and how about uh, Becca? I know that she had five points against Cal, nine against Cincinnati. Is it something you guys want to get her going on the right track again, too? Yeah, I think right now a little bit. Um, you know, our point guards are still pretty new to this. Um, 
uh, Anaya Baker struggling with some shin splints that are causing her to really, you know, kind of look at me and say I'm limited mm -hmm. and, and she's only playing, you know, 12 minutes. Um, and Reese is getting back from an injury and she's doing tremendous, um, but it's a totally different system than right. she's used to. Uh, when those guys go faster, that's when Becca gets a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. in that trail spot, which is why we have her there. Um, but she's also, I think, you know, really kind of uh, trying to force certain things. And, and really the offense is so balanced. If you just mm -hmm. let it come to you, mm -hmm. it, it'll happen. So she was tremendous for the first few games, and she keeps thinking she's struggling. But I really don't think that's what it is. We have a lot of balance. We have other kids stepping up. Well, Coach, uh, you play the Southern Oregon team. It, although a D2 team, a 7-0 and D2 team, yep. and a pretty good one coming up. Give yep. us a little preview of that. You know, um, they've been a, a great program for a number of years. Lynn Kennedy, their coach there, has done a great job. They win conference championships, mm -hmm. and um, they have veteran players on their roster right now. Um, I can't speak to their opponents, but I know that they're going to come in confident at 7-0. Right. and oh. They score 88 points per game, so obviously they can put the ball in the basket. Mm -hmm. At any level, if you can put it in the hoop, mm -hmm. you can be dangerous. <laughs> so um, the tempo has to be ours. we got to force tempo, um, and, and I think that we got to get the ball inside and let our post players go to work a little bit. Um, we, we're more athletic than they are, uh, right. probably in every position, and so we got to use that to our advantage. All right, that's San Jose State women's basketball coach Jamie Craighead. Thanks for joining us here. Thanks, Justin. More on Spartan Sports Central when we return. Throw it. I'm starving. Where's the food? Who's hungry? Una Moss. No way. Every party can use Una Moss. Fresh from the market ingredients is the essence of great tasting Mexican food. We grill our chicken and steak to perfection, and our fusion of traditional Mexican dishes means delicious, healthy choices for you. Una Mas, we taste better. We should invite her again. So that's how Santa fits it in a sleigh. Wow. Wow. The magic of the season is here at the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Lease the 2015 GS350 for $449 a month for 36 months, and we'll make your first month's payment. See your Lexus dealer. With millions of businesses all in one place, the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. But can it get you to the moon? You'll need a space helmet. YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores. Check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. Welcome back on Spartan Sports Central. Now joined by San Jose State football coach Ron Carriger. And uh, coach, last time we'll have you on here in this season, obviously a tough end to a tough season. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to talk about that San Diego State game. Boy, there was a, a lot of guys going down. And I just want to know mm -hmm. before the offseason starts, how are the guys that, that went out with injuries in that game? Yeah, it was a tough one, uh, no question. Uh, we, our our uh, staff of medical personnel just to help kept busy the entire game. It seemed like every five minutes Laura was saying so and so's down, so and so's out. And it was tough, but all in all, I, I believe we're okay. It's nothing uh, surgery-wise requiring. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't affect spring football practice, but we want to get them back, get them healthy, and then really begin the off-season process of, of strength and conditioning, which is such an important part of the program. Well, Coach, obviously a, a tough end of the season. What was the message to the team after the season, just mm -hmm. kind of close things out? Yeah, it was, I couldn't sugarcoat it. I, I had to be direct and straightforward. It, it wasn't our standard. Uh, we have higher standards than that, and uh, it was a challenging time. And, and uh, I, uh, I'm going to meet every player on our team individually. I have appointments set up here um, and to get a chance to meet with them, meet with the coaches individually, talk through. I have some decisions I have to make, uh, uh, assess everything from the program from A to Z and go from there. Um, but I did put a little a light on it at the end of uh, – 
you know, as, as hard as things are right now, I've been here before. I have at a previous stop I was at, um, had a really challenging third year in the program and, uh, and then just got better. And then those kids, as they became second, third and fourth year starters two years later, had two championship teams and I think that foundation was laid during those challenging times that's that's when you grow the most when when challenging times hit and and uh, I told our players we can grow from this uh, we could not grow from it and not benefit us mm -hmm. but we can actually learn and feel the sting and and understand it is a game of inches every little thing matters every little effort every little focus of a detail carries over and makes a difference in a game well coach uh, really the 2015 season starts right now right. And, and what do you get what do you want to see the focus of the offseason for the team first and foremost and mm -hmm. then for the coaching staff yeah coach Rebe and I've talked we're gonna have a, a, a more emphasis on the strength part of, of things and less on the running the that part uh, because we do need to get be a stronger team. We, we saw it firsthand the last game of the year, but mm -hmm. over the season we wore down and injuries sometimes are related, but not always related to uh, strength. I mean, sometimes injuries, uh, concussions, for example, aren't necessarily a result of uh, your bench and your squat. Mm -hmm. it, it happens, but we need to be a team. We develop depth and then we need to be a strong team so we can uh, we can win the battle in the trenches and that's such an important part of the game. Well, and, and Coach, do you now go out on a recruiting trail and say th these are the spots we need to try and fill in and how do you approach recruiting? Yeah, re re recruiting always is, is changing. It's very liquid, if you will, of, of what you're going after, but we generally recruit every position, mm -hmm. but as the season goes and different needs arise, our, our focus shifts of what our immediate needs are. And, and right now I think immediate needs need is, is, is defensive lineman would be would be an example there receivers another position that jumps out and we'll see uh, uh, at the quarterback position we'll see as well there what what what's out there what we see but uh, bottom line is I feel confident about the the players we the young men we have in our program I do I think uh, we just need to get back to right the ship and get that confidence back, get that swagger back, so we know that we can go out and compete against anyone. And in terms of the coaching staff, do you guys tend to take a step back, take some time off here, and then try and get going again? Yeah, well, we really hit the ground running. Today, uh, recruiting starts, all the coaches are out, mm -hmm. and, and I'm heading out here uh, and, and getting on the road and, and, and talking to our committed players, but also looking at some of those positions that I think could help our program in 2015. And so assessing our needs constantly but trying to shore up those needs and, and bring uh, help to our program not just long term but guys who can help us next year. All right that's San Jose State head coach Ron Carrier. Coach thanks so much all season long we really appreciate the time I know it was a tough year but yeah. thanks for every episode. Thank you Justin and your support staff I thank everyone here I appreciate it. it's always a privilege to be on your show. All right we'll take another break here more to come on Spartan Sports Central when we return. <laughs> come together and there it is our new car so that's how santa fits it in a sleigh wow wow the magic of the season is here at the lexus december to remember sales event lease the 2015 gs350 for 449 a month for 36 months and we'll make your first month's payment see your lexus dealer with millions of businesses all in one place the yp app can help you do pretty much anything but can it get you to the moon need a space helmet, YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores, check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. I'm starving, where's the food? Every party can use Unamas. Fresh from the market ingredients is the essence of great tasting Mexican food. We grill our chicken and steak to perfection. And our fusion of traditional Mexican dishes means delicious, healthy choices for you. Unamas, we taste better. We should invite her again.
Welcome back on Spartan Sports Central. That does it for this week's episode. With no more football on the schedule this year, we switch to basketball. The next home game for the men's team is this Saturday against Santa Clara. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock from the Event Center pregame on 1590 AM KLIV and the Spartan Radio Network at 6.30. Thanks for watching this week. We'll see you next time.